I'm Kimberly and I'm with Jen Kingwell, a brand new Moda Fabric Designer and she's going to show us how she quilts as she goes. Thanks Kimberly. Um, I hand quilt almost everything, of every quilt I make just because I love the process. But the biggest thing I'm asked is um, about the bulk. Some people don't like handling the weight of a whole quilt. So you can quilt as you go when you're hand quilting, exactly the same as you can when you're machine quilting. Um, a quilt like this, this is my quilt green tea and sweet beans, but because I'm in Texas, it's probably always going to be called sweet tea and green beans. I hear that a lot, so whichever way it doesn't matter. This quilt is put together in sections. So the blocks are made and then the quilt's constructed in four um, different sections. So what you can do is make up those four sections and quilt each one individually and then join them together. So this is uh, the panels that you will have quilted. This is section one quilted, section two quilted. Right, now you leave at the edge unquilted because you need some um, room to play. Join your front, your sections together with your quarter inch seam allowance. And I press my seam open just because it gives a nice flat. And this um, is the back of the quilt? No, this is actually the front of the quilt that you're joining. All right, okay. this is the front of the quilt so that join you're the joining. Front. The spot's the back. You need some spare batting. So once you've got, you know, you've got these pieces, overlap them. I find it better if, I've, and I've got a little sample here, if you cut this in a straight line and put your edge, edge to edge, you can get a fracture point in your quilt. Um, so what I do is I overlap, and you only need a couple of inches overlap, and with your scissors, cut. Now, I usually do a wavy line, but you can do, you can cut, a, a zigzag, like so, or I usually just do a, a curve. And so how much extra have you left unquilted? There's probably, probably about three inches, inches or so extra. each side. So if you just do a little wavy curve like that, you remove the, the top and bottom piece. Now these will fit together perfectly because they've sat on top of each other. I haven't done that very well, but if you keep it flat, they'll just, and then I just get a, a thread and a needle and I just do a big over whip stitch, just rough. It's just really to hold it together. Okay. All right. And you're using 50 <clears throat> weight to I do use, that? I use 50 weight okay. to do that. Just keeps it nice and fine. That one's, this one's better. So because you've set them directly on top of each other, your curve will follow each other and stitch. Then you just lay your backing down and fold under your edge and you can press that if you wish to I don't I just pop a couple of pins in there and then just slip stitch just a blind hemming stitch or a slip stitch like an applique stitch you just stitch that down okay and so you just do no a little bulk. like a tighter stitch than you did here because this is a bigger that's just batter. a big stitch just to hold it together and this is sort of more like your like you were doing a blind hem or something like that and then you would go back and finish the quilting here. Then you quilt those pieces. So you've only got that tiny little section to quilt with the bulk of the quilt. This is awesome. I'm going to have to try this sometime. Do you do this often? Yeah, I do. You I do? do? Anything that's, that has definite sections, you can do it this way. I mean, if you wanted to, you could do individual blocks, but that becomes a bit tedious. Yes. But you could do a quilt like this. You could make it in two halves mm -hmm. and quilt half, join it down where there's a center seam and then do exactly the same thing. Well, we will so, have to try that out. Thank you so My much. My pleasure.